Hi, my name is Amelia Beretta and this is the third video of a larger series in which we see how to make our animation look a little bit more appealing by rendering it out in a real engine rather than settling for a sad play blast. In the previous video we have seen how to design a color key that we could use as a reference for lighting. We were doing great until we realized that the render frames from Unreal did not quite match what we saw in camera and in the viewport. Today we are going to fix that. We'll see which factors could cause a discrepancy in render such as forgotten lights for instance, eye adaptation, and we will see how to control exposure in our viewport and in camera so that colors and light will match in both viewport and renders in Unreal Engine. The Panther animation we are using for this series of videos comes from a course of mine that shows how to animate a creature by animating just a few parts and reuse their animation in a way or another to complete the rest of the piece. You can find the link to the course in the description below, as well as the Olympic scene of the resulting animation, which you can use to follow this tutorial. If you have watched the previous video, you will remember that we launched our first render, but the result wasn't quite what we were seeing in the viewport. I think it is very interesting because this is not just a small difference, this is entirely different. I mean, the only thing that these two renders have in common, the viewport and the rendered frame, is that there's a panther and a jungle and some rocks. Everything else is different. One thing I believe would deserve our attention is what happens in the outliner as I hit render. Please notice that in the outliner we have two directional lights, directional light and directional light 2. One of the two directional lights is actually the light I used to render out snapshots for my color key. I just forgot it there. Let's maybe rename directional light to key light. Please have a look at what happens there when I hit render local. I hit render local and the outliner composition changes as Unreal renders. And one thing that I find really interesting is that directional light 2 is not hidden anymore. So it seems that at the moment of rendering Unreal switches on the lights that I had off in my outliner which is a bit bizarre if you ask me, although at least it explains the bright lighting that we see here in the render. In fact, if we go into the outliner and switch on directional light too, you see we get that render. So I think this is something we have to be aware of. Now, I'm not really sure why this happens and I'm just going to delete this light because I don't even need it, but it's something you need to be aware of. So now we're going to launch another render and see if things have changed. And things have changed indeed. Now it seems like the lighting has become consistent. Apart from the motion blur, which is present in the render and is not present in the viewport, but that's okay, the colors look by and large the same in the viewport and in the render now. However, there are a couple of things I think you should be aware of. The first one being auto exposure. In game engines, and in Unreal in particular, the exposure is changing based on what you see on screen. So for instance, in this render, as you check the landscape at the end of the hallway there, you see it's white. But as we get closer to the landscape and into the next room, you see that the landscape is now visible. And that's because the game automatically adjusts the exposure in a similar way to what your eye normally does in real life. And while this is a great feature to have in game, it's not ideal for our render. We don't want the exposure to change throughout the render, or maybe you do want it, I don't know. But the one thing is, you should be aware of this feature and how to enable or disable it. In my case, I would like to disable this feature, so let's have a look at how to do it. To disable eye adaptation in Unreal, you go under Show on top of the viewport, you scroll down until you find Post Processing, and in there in the menu, you find Eye Adaptation. You can remove that from there, you can disable it. Now there's another catch. You have to go under Edit, Project Settings, and in there you type in Exposure, and you want to make sure that Auto Exposure is set to Off, and it is in this case. That should make sure that Auto Exposure is not going to mess with our renders. Again, there are instances in which you might want to have these features, Another thing you have to be aware of is that under the central menu in the viewport, the one that by default says lit, if you click on it, at the bottom you will find game settings and EV100. Now I am not a game developer, so I can't tell you for sure which settings these are. The thing is, if you want to render, you don't want to have settings applied to the viewport and then when you get to render, maybe something is different in render. So I'm going to disable the game settings. And you see this is going to change the lighting a little bit. 
another thing that is important to know is that under the game settings, you have the exposure value, which by default is set to one. This exposure value is the value that control you see exposure in the viewport. This value does not affect the render. So if I look into the viewport with an EV 100 of minus five, and then I launch a render, you will find that this level of exposure that we see in the viewport has nothing to do with the render. So for us, poor men of the street that just want to render our animation, it would be a good idea, I think, to make sure that whichever settings we have in the EV100 in the viewport is going to be the same we're going to have in the render itself. So for instance, if I wanted to set the EV100 to minus five and render with that EV100, one of the ways would be to create a new object in the form of a volume, post-process volume, and place it in the environment. Now, under the post-process volume, in the details, we're going to search bound, and we want to make the volume unbound so that the volume is going to affect the whole scene. And we're going to clear up the search box, and we're going to check whether this volume is working. If I go under chromatic aberration, for instance, and enable it and increase the intensity, you see that indeed the chromatic aberration is affecting the whole scene. So that means that this post-processing value is actually affecting the whole scene, regardless of whether the camera falls into the volume or not. This is going to be very useful later on, I think. Into the volume, as a bunch of settings, we find exposure. We want to enable metering mode and we want to enable min and max EV100. And if we input there the same value we have in the viewport, in this case minus five, we should be getting the same exposure in camera and in the viewport. And the next time we launch a render, you see that the viewport will match the camera, which will match the render. As far as I can understand, these are more or less the basics of controlling exposure in your viewport and in the render. You can read more about all the exposure in the documentation of Unreal. So in our case, I want to set the EV to one and, and in the post processing, again, I want to set it to one and one so that there will not be any auto exposure really because the exposure will be set to one. You can also control the exposure manually by just operating the camera settings like ISO, aperture and so forth. So these steps should ensure that whichever lighting we have in the viewport will be the same in the rendering, which means that now we can finally start to match our lighting. Having said that, if all you need is just to have a quick render out, just to avoid having a play blast, now you know that you can go under Windows Cinematics and you can render things out through the movie render queue. And the default settings are kind of okay. And I think that's it for this video. In the next one, we are hopefully going to match the lighting from the color key and improve the render quality, control the gobble light a little bit better and hopefully improve the render a little bit. I hope you have found this video useful and if that's the case, please consider liking, subscribing and hitting the notification bell. Have fun!